me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. The preacher prayed for me. Yes, he did. Had me on his mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed for me. My mother prayed for me. Yeah. Had me on her mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. King Jesus. King Jesus. Thank you. Dear God, we thank you and praise you for the blessing and the privilege to give back to you out of your abundant blessings to us. Bless these tithes and offerings as they're used in ministry, O oh God, to share among your human family. Bless both gift and giver, and we give you praise and thanks for it all, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Can y'all feel the spirit in here this morning? I thought it was just me, but can y'all really feel the spirit of God this morning? Amen. Oh, it's a wonder what the Lord can do. What the Lord can do.
song bless me I know it could bless people in different ways but when things come before you if that bill can't be paid you might say I wonder what I can do if that relationship gets strained I wonder what I can do you lose your job I wonder what I can do your car breaks down on the road I wonder what I can do but we don't have to do that as people of faith we can wonder what the Lord can do I'm telling you right now, when we face a situation and we look at ourselves and wonder what's under our power, wonder what we can do, wonder how we can make it work, we need to take a chill pill and stop and say, I wonder what the Lord can do. The one who can heal the sick and raise the dead and give sight to the blind and make the lame to walk and take your feet out of the miry clay and get you walking on your way and put food on your table and wake you up in the morning 
when we're facing issues, we need to begin to wonder what the Lord can do. Praise the Lord. Let's thank God for our wonderful choir, wonderful musicians, for sharing that song of ministry with us today. Amen. Amen and amen. I will get right into our scripture for today, which is coming from 1 Samuel 17, a very, very familiar scriptural passage. And we'll, we'll just be looking at a small part of it today. 1 Samuel 17, beginning at verse 32. We know what has already happened. We know that Goliath has been banging on that shield and banging that spear and been threatening the people of Israel. And then somebody comes on the scene and we call his name David. It says in verse 32, Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, meaning Goliath. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. And Saul, who was the king, said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord with you. The title of today's message is, it's not just trouble, it's training. It's not just trouble, it's training. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to be together, to worship together, to sing together, to pray, to give, and just to be in like mind, one with another in this place, and have it be all about you. We're so thankful because you have made it all about us. By sending your son, by sending your Holy Spirit, by creating this wonderful world in which we live, Lord God. You've made it all about us, and so we need to make it all about you so that we can best navigate the blessings that you have provided. Lord God, as we're in this place, there are people in various settings and seasons, seasons of celebration, seasons of victory, seasons of grief, hurt, pain, confusion, indecision, seasons of stillness. But no matter where that season is, Lord God, let this word be a word for them, Lord God. So while in the season, they can celebrate you and they can be ready for the next season to come. Lord God, we ask all those under the sound of my voice, Lord God, hear your word and your word only. Prepare their minds and their hearts to be fertile ground to receive the seed of your word. That it germinate, grow, and bear much fruit for today, for tomorrow, and for days to come. So much so that there is an overflow of abundance that it can be shared one with another. We thank you and love you and count all this done in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. If you've been in here and you've been in trouble before, just say amen. If you've been here and lived life and trouble has come your way, just say amen. 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 All of us have experienced trouble. And as we preachers like to say, either you already done had some trouble, you're in the midst of trouble, or trouble is coming. 
So if trouble is so prevalent, what we want to do is to be able to manage trouble in the way that God would have us to do it. When we face trouble, are we leaving trouble being beaten, being bruised, and being abused? Or are we leaving trouble being improved? How many would rather be improved? Amen. I know I would. But so many of us leave trouble after trouble after trouble being beaten, bruised, and abused. Well, today we're going to address that with this message that it's not just trouble, but it's training. Think about what troubles the Lord has brought you through and what it has wrought. Three things that we want to say about trouble, and we'll walk you through this brief passage of Scripture just to get to that. Let's look at verses 32 and 33 again. It simply says, Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, meaning Goliath. Your soul will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. So I want to challenge you. One of the first steps with trouble is you need to acknowledge the trouble. You need to point it out. You need to know what's happening. You need to call it out. You need to name it. You know, we have a history of that, too, in this country. And one of the most prominent examples of that is with hurricanes. A tropical storm comes, and what do they do? They name it. And it may change to a hurricane. And we see it, and we got a name on it. We can identify it. We can watch it. We can look at its track. We can wonder where it's going. We can look at its strength. We can look at its power. And we can anticipate what's going to happen. And so we're acknowledging that trouble. But some of us don't want to even acknowledge the trouble. Some of us Christians, we're too holy to be in trouble. Y'all know that old song, I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain? You know, that's a good old song, ain't it? But the, the modern folk ain't want to say, oh, no, I ain't climbing up no rough side. I got it easy. I got it with God. I'm with the Lord, so my side ain't rough. No, your side is rough. In fact, if you know the Lord, sometimes your side is going to be rougher than others, Amen. But what you have to know is when you have that rough side of the mountain, it gets you something to hold on to to get you to that next step. If you've ever seen anybody mountain climbing, the most challenging climbs are the ones that don't have no ridges and roughness to it. But it's just a slippery slope to get you back down on the bottom. So we want to thank God for that rough side of the mountain and we want to acknowledge it and not deny it. But some of us don't want to acknowledge trouble. Some of us want to say, oh, that ain't nothing but the devil. That ain't nothing but the devil. And we just minimize it to that. And we're just in denial about it. You know, your bill ain't paid. Oh, that's all right, God. I, you know, I'm just going to act like it ain't there. I'm just going to pretend like it ain't happened. No, you need to acknowledge the trouble. The trouble was acknowledged. David saw what the enemy was and saw who he was and where he was. And not only that, saw the king acknowledge it too. Like, boy, you going to fight this dude. When, you were, when he was in diapers, he was training to be a warrior, and now you're barely out of diapers now, and you're going to come up and try to fight this man? Oh, no, it ain't going to work. He was acknowledging that trouble. Are you acknowledging the trouble that's in your life today? Are you pointing it out? Are you naming it? Are you talking about it? It doesn't mean you're captive to it, but you need to know that it's there first. You know, if you talk to any boxer or any fighter or anything like that, or even from football players, what they'll tell you is it's the punch or the hit that you don't see that knocks you out. <laughs> you don't see that punch coming and it hits you. Woo, you on the ground. But if you see it, if you acknowledge it, if, if it's before you, then you can brace yourself. There's a boxer here in the back, too. He'll tell you that. It's the punch that don't see that'll knock you out. So the first step is. Acknowledge the trouble. The second we'll find in verses 34 and 35. It says, but David said to Saul, remember he said, you, you can't do this. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear 
came and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its what? Mouth. He delivered it from his mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by the beard and struck and killed it. So first you need to acknowledge the trouble, but the second thing you need to do is meet the trouble. Amen. You need to meet it head on. You need to go for it. Sometimes we are running from trouble, but sometimes we need to go to it and say, no, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take ownership of the situation and I'm going to put God on it and it's going to be taken over by me instead of just turning our backs and turning tail and running from it. But some of us today... We like to not be present in it. Trouble comes. We see trouble a mile away. What do we do? Go the other way. We try to avoid it. We try to make sure we don't, we don't have anything to do with it. Oh, I, I, I've seen this before, and it caused a problem, so I'm not going to have nothing to do with it no more. Oh, y'all ought to try this thing. Oh, it's been tried before, and last time it was tried, ooh, this happened, so no, we're not going to try that again. So we're not going to even be present in the midst of trouble we try to even escape it. And some of us are wrapped up into escapism. We get the trouble. Some of us don't even want to face it. Some of us want to run from it. But some of the ways that we run from it is our own addictions. We go back to those old habits. We go back to the drinking. We go back to the running. We go back to the womanizing and the manizing. This is equal opportunity, amen. We go back to doing the things that we do to distract us from it. We get on those video games and say, well, I'm not going to do that. We go gambling. We turn on the television and watch those shows. We do whatever we can to escape the moment, to escape the issue, to escape what is really going on. Because we want a diversion from reality. We want a diversion from trouble. And we try to escape it. Now I'm going to admit something that I don't do too well. That uh, a company benefits off of. But I think I may be in good company. I have a membership with this company called Planet Fitness. Y'all know where I'm going with this. And they only charge me like $19.95 a month, you know. You can come in any time. $19.95. I ain't been there in one, two, three, four, five months. That $19.95, they keep getting it. It keeps coming out of my account. But I haven't put my foot in the door. Well, 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 Reverend, if, it, if it's, if it's uh, not going in the door, why don't you just stop it? Well, they make you go through a couple little hoops. And you think, well, it's only 1995, and, you know, I think I'm going to be there next week, so I'm not going to stop it yet because next week is going to be the week that I get myself together and that I get my behind in there and do some working out. But what ends up happening is you just keep paying that money, and they're sitting back there, fat cats getting rich. Because you can ask some people who are very dedicated to Planet Fitness. I'm not going to talk about who they are. And go in there all the time. He don't even see me pointing at them. <laughs> go in there all the time. And they get their money's worth. But they're in there with the 20 people out of the 200 that done paid all the money. And I said that to say because that's another form of escapism. We, we, we say we're going to do something, but then we don't do it. But we need to face and meet the trouble because we need the resistance. We need that training. As you start lifting those weights, as you start moving in the, on those machines, your body ends up developing greater muscles so that later on when there's something that you need to do, you can use those muscles. But as I was laying ill for all those weeks and those months, I sat there, my body began to what they call atrophy. I began to lose musculature. I didn't have hardly any more stamina anymore. I couldn't move because there was no resistance. I'm just sitting there. I'm just laying there. So what we need to know is we need to meet trouble where it is, and we need to get to the resistance and start working out so we can get to a level that when another trouble comes, we can handle it. That's what David did. He was sitting here as a shepherd over sheep over the flock. He could have just 
sat there and said, my job is a nothing job. Don't nobody regard me. Don't nobody mess with me. Oop, the lion done took a sheep. Oh, well, I still got 99 left. That's all right. That's a lion, you know. <laughs> then the bear show up and take another one. Well, I still got 98 sheep, so, you know, that's all right. That's a, that's a bear, you know. But he met the trouble. He met the lion. He met the bear. And he faced him and chased him down and got that sheep back just like Jesus did for us. But here's the beautiful part. Oh, yes, he got the sheep back. Oh, yes, he faced the lion. Yes, he faced the bear. Yes, he destroyed them. But the victory hadn't come yet. All that did was build up his muscles, both his muscles of faith and confidence in God and his physical muscles to let him know I can do this thing. Not through my power, but through the power of my God. And so when he met Goliath, who was bigger than any lion, bigger than any bear, like it don't matter. I done already took care of the other two. I'm going to take care of this one. <laughs> Ain't that what he said? How many of us have avoided trouble and avoided meeting trouble year after year, year after year? Then another trouble comes and it's even harder. Well, sometimes trouble can be a blessing because God is trying to show us we need to work out. Sometimes pain can teach us, hey, look, son, look, daughter, y'all need to work on this. You need to address this. So the first thing in dealing with trouble is you need to acknowledge the trouble and then you need to meet the trouble. Let's look at verse 36 for that third thing. And this is David's servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the army of the living God. So we need to acknowledge the trouble. We need to meet the trouble. And then we have to endure through the trouble. <clears throat> Some of us have trouble so long that we have become accustomed to adversity. How many people know that their life seems to be just one train of trouble after the next? Another car come along, another car come along. Each one is trouble. has a different label on it, but it's just trouble. And that's a hard thing to go through, but we need to endure through the trouble. The word says we need to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, so we know that our labors are not in vain. The trouble keeps coming like the train. Chuka, 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 chuka. Oh, not another one, not another one. But I'm having you to know that if you acknowledge the trouble, if you meet the trouble, and you have a spirit of enduring the trouble, that even when the trouble comes, all you see it is another stepping stone. You know, all you see it is another opportunity to grow, another opportunity to meet it, another challenge. And that's what David said here. He's like, shoot, I done done all these things, and now. Ain't going to nobody else stop me with this one because he defied the armies of the living God. And I regard God way over anything. What was that song we heard? Not wonder what I can do. Wonder what, what the Lord can do. Amen. And so that's what <clears throat> we need to understand today. Again, the title today is it's not just trouble. It's what? Training. Training. See, if you go through issues in your life, if you go through poverty in your life and sickness in your life, you go through separation and relationship times, you go through mental scrutiny, you go through the loss of home or loss of a job, and then that's it, that's just trouble. Who wants that? If you want that today, if all you want is trouble, say amen. Not me. So I refuse to have it just be trouble. I want it to be training. If I go through, if I've gone through this illness I want to go through, I better come out improved. I better come out better. I better come out with a better testimony. I better come out with a stronger understanding of who I am and who I am in God and who God is with and for me. And then it becomes training. That way with all I've been through, I don't look back and go, oh, Lord, look at what I had to go through. No, I look back and say, oh, look what I got to go through. And now look where I am. 
Next challenge, please. Next opportunity, please. And so you need to understand and realize that you don't want just trouble. You want training. And the way you get training is you acknowledge the trouble, you meet the trouble, and you endure through the trouble. And the way you know that you have transitioned from just trouble to training is just the way we see here in verse 37. It simply says, moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Well, go on there, man. Go ahead and get it done. What paws has God delivered you from? What paws have come in your life? What things have come to take away from you? What things have come to put a minus on your column what things have come to you to cripple you to, to disfigure you or to do you over or to do you in you can look back and say God delivered me from that and now this next thing that's coming guess what he gonna deliver me from that too and we know the rest of the story trouble ain't gonna be nice to you trouble is going to mock you trouble is gonna hit you where you hurt he was told by Saul, the king, oh, you just a little boy. You just a youngling. You ain't nothing. And guess what? Goliath said the same thing to, oh, am I a dog? You're going to bring this little flea coming after me? I'm paraphrasing. You're going to bring this little boy out of me? Please. Are you serious? I don't even have to get up out of bed to beat this little sucker. And he was just, that's what trouble will do to you. But David ain't say none of that. He's like, before this over, I'm going to have your head on the ground. And he had gotten them stones up and he picked them up and he got them stones, those smooth stones, a whole bunch of them. But for Goliath, he only needed how many? One. And he tossed that thing and buried it straight into his head. And that was the end of it. Trouble is going to come for you strong. But what's that saying there? The bigger they are, what? The bigger that trouble comes in your life. If you keep God at the center and come to know that I've already acknowledged the trouble, I have already met the trouble, I have already endured the trouble, God has already delivered me from this, from that, and the other, and he's going to deliver me from this. If you acknowledge that, then not only have you acknowledged, met, and endured trouble, now you have victory over trouble. Anybody here want the victory? Amen. I know I do. Each and every time. I may not feel like I have it now, but guess what? I'm going to keep growing in that, and now I'm going to realize that it should not just be trouble. It should be training. As we close out today, Hebrews 12 and 10 says, For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them. But he, meaning God, for our profit that we may be partakers of his God's holiness. Verse 11, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Think about so many young people today who are growing up with no trouble given to them for what they do. No training. And they come out just as weak and just as hurt and just as susceptible to death as anything. But look back, too, on the parents who, I'm not talking about abuse, but the parents who brought trouble to us and let us know, no, you don't need to do it this way, you need to do it this way. And they trained us. The chastening, the hurting, the discipline, it wasn't pleasant when it happened. But then you look back over your life and you think things over. You're like, ooh, if I didn't get that, I wouldn't be able to survive this. If my daddy didn't teach me that, if my uncle didn't teach me that, if my mama didn't teach me that, if my granddaddy, my grandmama, my brother and sister, and that man down the road, that woman down the road ain't teach me this, I wouldn't be able to handle that. So no today and know always that you as a Christian don't want to be satisfied that it's not just trouble but it's training. Amen? Amen.
What a word from the Lord. That was a blessing because, you know, <clears throat> we all go through things in life. There's some of us have never accepted Christ in our lives. There's some of us know that we need Christ. And at the same time, we allow this trouble to continuously to wear us down. So I don't know about you, but you know, maybe today is the day that you want to come before Christ and accept Christ as your personal Savior. And say, Lord, I want you to remove this trouble out of my life. I want to be able to lean on you in the midst of it all. If that's you today, the doors of the church is open. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And then two, you may be going through this trouble time that pastor was talking about. We need to be trained. Because every time you go through certain trouble, you should come out on the other side stronger than you were when you went in. You should be able to face it. You should be able to stand there and say, you know, Lord, I thank you knowing that you, can't, you would not leave me nor forsake me. The altar is open if anybody want to pray out of this morning. The altar is open. Amen. Amen. Our God and our Father, the Lord of our Don't life, you are our strength, you are our healer, so our provider. You know each and everything about us, Father God. You have shaped us into who we are today. So, Father God, we actually just bless each and every one of us right now. Only the way that you know how to bless us. Thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do. And how are you going to do it? Even in the midst of our troubles, we will see a blessing. Thank you for this training process. Because, Father God, we just want to say thank you. Because that's all it is, a training process for what we have forward to look to. So, Father God, continuously to mold us and to shape us into the children that you want us to be. Because we know that you have a plan. For and we say thank you for that. So, Father God, right now, we say, Lord, we love you and we adore you. We praise you and we worship you. We magnify your name. Bless each and every one for what they need today. Because this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be blessed in it. We glorify you now. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.